This will be my first video with the new microphone, hence I will actually be wearing the headset. Um, and if it doesn't sound markedly better, I probably won't use it again. But for now, it will be used. Anyways, it is the post fight time from uh, UFC 107. Went 7-4 and four in terms of strict picks, which is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, what I would say my breakdowns were. Um... Saw two undercard fights, one of which was Alan Belcher defeating uh, Wilson Govea. That was a good fight. Liked it. Enjoyed it. Belcher via stoppage. Uh, and the other one was uh, Demarcus Johnson, Edgar Garcia. Fight was kind of like I thought it would go with Edgar winning, but uh, Demarcus catching him with an up kick and uh, into a triangle choke. So good work by Demarcus. Uh, Edgar, keep on trucking. Um, in the end, you got caught, and uh, it happens. Main event, or main card. Pardon. Started off with Paul Buentello, Stefan Struve. Stefan Struve winning a UD, uh, or majority decision, pardon me. I thought Buentello won rounds two and three and lost round one. I don't think anyone thought that, you know, anyone other than Struve won round one. Um, but I'm not, you know, butthurt about the decision. In order, you know, even to really confirm that I think Buentello should have won, I would have to look at the Compu Strikes uh, stats just to see if he landed, if he actually did outland Struve. Um, Buentello did not take advantage when he got inside, which is was really disappointing. When he got inside, he like Muay Thai plumbed and did uh, nothing and let Struve clinch up with him, which was the absolute worst thing he could do. When he got inside, he needed to be landing some bombs, and he didn't, and that's why he lost his fight. Pretty simple. Clay, Clay Guida versus Kenny Florian. Um... First round, Clay was doing some things that I thought, you know, were really good. Uh, he took Kenny down. He didn't look too in, da too in danger. Um, but he kind of fell in love with his hands. He stopped going for takedowns in round two. Got rocked and uh, got tapped. Um, oh, yeah. Who should fight Struve next? Struve kind of moves up the ladder. But until I don't think it really matters. I think he's just in there to add depth. Struve, maybe a fight with... Um, you know, I can't... You th they seem to want to push him, and I'm trying to figure out who he could, you know, beat. That's kind of a name, and a name doesn't really come to mind, is the problem. So I leave that blank. As for Florian, does he get another shot at BJ Penn? I don't think so. Um, set up a fight between him and uh, either Gray Maynard or Frankie Edgar, maybe as a number one contender's bout. Uh, as for Guida, heading down the ladder. Somebody can put up an exciting fight with uh, maybe a Tyson, maybe a rematch with Tyson Griffin. Because I think that that rematch I think has been a bit a uh, bit overdue. Let's put it that way. On to the next fight, John Fitch, Mike Pierce. If anyone was really surprised by this fight, they shouldn't have been. Fitch took down Pierce, got his back in the first and second round. He was winning the third round up until he got rocked, and then Pierce kind of stole the round with a big flurry. But aside from that, you know, Fitch, easy decision. Where does Fitch go? Honestly, don't know, because, I mean, unless you're going to give him a title shot, there's really no up the ladder for him. Um, rematch with Alves would be my best suggestion. Uh, as for Mike Pierce, kind of steps down the ladder, I guess. Maybe a fight against... Uh, if Jake Ellenberger wins his upcoming fight, I would like to see Jake Ellenberger versus Mike Pierce. I will go with that one. Then we had Frank Mir versus Congo. Mir stunned Congo. Choked him out with a guillotine. Uh, I was surprised that he could stun him because I didn't think his power was that great. But he did. Um, where does Mir go? Mir wants Lesnar. Um, I think a date with Noguera is pretty Probably in the cards, though. Uh, no Garrett and Mir 2. And if he wins that, then I think he gets a shot at Lesnar. Assuming Lesnar comes back. Um, for Congo, I do not care. A man who intentionally nutshots people and, you know, makes some wild claims. I found it amusing he was calling Frank Mir Big Mouth. This is the guy who said Fedor was afraid of him. So, I'm kind of left with this theory that, you know, you shouldn't really call people Big Mouth if you yourself are a big mouth. <sighs> who does he fight? I don't know. I would like someone who would beat him and send him out of the UFC. That would be beautiful. 
Uh, maybe Gabriel Gonzaga when he's healthy. <laughs> Let's put that one in there. Um, main event. BJ Penn, Diego Sanchez. This fight was just too much firepower for Diego to handle. Um, he doesn't have the cardio to push the pace like he did at 170. It is something people, I think, kind of have to just get used to. Um, he didn't gas this fight, uh, so that's good. So it, it does look like he does have decent cardio at 155 to the point where it's not something I think you can exploit. But when your biggest weapon was dogged determination and cardio and it didn't follow you down the weight class, you, you're kind of in trouble. He got outstruck by BJ with the hands. I mean, and he really didn't throw a lot of kicks, if any kicks. I can't. I really can't think of a kick even, but he may have thrown something. But BJ outstruck him. He could not take, he could not take BJ down. Um, BJ is just a guy that everyone's going to have a very hard time taking down unless you can um, get the double leg or uh, or a clinch takedown would be the other idea. Maybe a, like a judo type thing might be. But the single leg, you are completely lost if you are going to take B BJ down. You have to be able to null and void that flexibility and balance that he has that allows him to have such great takedown defense. Um, Diego eventually getting stopped with a very nasty cut. Uh, this fight kind of went like I thought it would. Like He just didn't have anything for BJ Penn. And this kind of the thing with you know, through at least two weight classes anyways, that is the welterweight class and the lightweight class, you don't really look forward to these title matches because you don't see anyone giving either BJ Penn or GSP any real trouble, which I guess kind of takes away the lure a little bit. Um, that's it. But anyways, next for BJ... Like I said, put Kenny up against Maynard or Edgar or, uh, yeah, probably one of those two. Number one contenders fight, maybe. Uh, and then the winner fights BJ. As for Diego, um, people want the rematch with Kenny. I don't think at this point that that serves any real purpose, but it's a fight that'll definitely happen down the road. Perhaps Diego fights, um, should fight. Sean Shirk, maybe. Do Sean Shirk versus uh, Diego. I think, you know, that's kind of the question is, Diego ran from stud-like wrestlers at 170, give him a 155 stud-like wrestler, and we'll see whether that problem is uh, still prevalent. And Shirk would be a good test on that. Another one would be like a Tyson Griffin, even, would be a decent idea. Anyways, that was the fight card. Uh, recast weren't as in-depth as usual, but that's kind of how it went. It wasn't the most exciting or even back-and-forth night of fights. So there you go. Peace out.